plus uh, b so b b uh, active and then spawn fast so who will be the first one to present this presentation so friends, apply to the request of kiran and uh, ashok please yeah yes. we are just short of time please yeah. yes yeah Thank please be please be active and then start your presentation nothing uh, nothing to fight uh, so shy away we are here to help you all so who will be the first one hello sir yes who is there rajendra here yes yeah your voice is breaking up yeah Sorry yes rajan proceed yeah 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 please please go ahead share screen and if you want to show your ppt then start can i share my screen sir yes please go ahead is it visible sir you yeah, know no, no it is visible yes is it visible sir yes it is visible please go ahead okay thank you good afternoon everyone you just have 2 minutes please rajan please don't mind uh, please yep yeah. sir actually uh, uh, system has got hanged in my laptop so okay so one thing what we will be doing just uh, send your ppts maybe to kiran on whatsapp group and they, he can present we got will take a lot of time so who will be the next person send this ppts in a group or maybe to directly to kiran and he will present that it is taking too much of time please start okay sir uh, i'm starting good afternoon everyone i am uh, presenting my work on comparative genome analysis to understand the resistance strategy of different bacillus species in different habitat so uh, what i uh, do i have taken uh, four random samples from ncbi uh, one is from 41 uh, kf2b bacillus altitude unit sample which is uh, collected from the stratosphere layer in india 2001 another one is from srv 11 3.8 km depth of deep indian sector of the uh, southern ocean in uh, 2011 another one is from b388 uh, from uh, us it has been collected from the indian mill mod and another uh, one is dsm26896 uh, which is a health product from portugal now the objective of my work uh, is to isolate uh, and download the, um, the whole genome sequence in fasta format from the ncbi and uh, i want to identify uh, if there is any uh, phage related elements integrated in their genome or not and then i uploaded the genome in the rast seed server uh, to annotate the whole genome so here is the whole genome data analysis using ncbi i uh, i have found that uh, the srb uh, have the uh, least number of genes as it is uh, comes from the deep indian sector of the southern ocean and uh, that uh, lacks uh, um, that lacks um, uh, different kinds of competition has uh, faces by this air sample as well as this soil sedimental samples so they have the higher number of genes this is the prophase region uh, region in the genome i have uh, done by using the faster tool uh, so here is the uh, result for the srb11 uh, i have found that one uh, uh, one and two, two uh, are the in questionable score uh, having the questionable score of phage prophase integrity and the other three having the most number of prophases integrated in their genome the red uh, the red symbol shows its incomplete uh, sequence are present there uh, 
maybe uh, there is some missing of uh, any uh, fudge uh, materials like uh, uh, capsid or any anything else and uh, finally this is the annotation uh, report of genome using the ras sub subsystem technology i have done just superficially uh, i have found that uh, this strain 41 kf2b contains the 14 different types of fudge prophage and transposomal element as well as plasmid here and uh, this uh, this has uh, also having the uh, cell wall capsule uh, parameters having 74 and virulence factor of 34 this is the um, uh, SORV11 report uh, where it contains only two. Uh, you already have two minutes, try to complete. Okay, okay, sir. Uh, it has only two uh, uh, fudge uh, profage and transposable element and having the lower number of virulence factor as well as cell wall and capsule factor. This is the uh, D388 uh, that contains higher number of uh, plasmid transposable and profages integrity in their genome, uh, that is 14. Uh, this is the uh, DSM 26896 having the nine plasmid uh, transposable element, prophage, and fudge element integrated in their genome. Uh, so, my work conclusion is that SORB, uh, as SORB is from the arid, uh, arid water and uh, less competitive region, so this has the least number of genes as well as least number of fudge, plasmid, and mobile, ele and mobile genetic elements, whereas the uh, soil and air, uh, air bacteria have the higher number of uh, fudges, prophages uh, integrated in their genome. Uh, so my future prospect to build a phylogenetic, uh, <coughs> phylogenetic tree uh, using other, uh, there are actually uh, bacillus alterinus uh, whole genome assembly available in the NCBI, so I want to build a phylogenetic tree with the all the genome sequences available there i want to identify the virulence factor by using the rust seed server i want to also study the uh, membrane transport in the um, uh, all the bacterial and the uh, specifically in the srv11 i want to study the antimicrobial peptide effects <clears throat> so this is the acknowledgement slide i i want to acknowledge uh, the okay. Uh, okay, all the mentors of the okay, okay, okay. okay. We, will, we will have a look at it thanks a lot uh, Liu. so when, when you ask the questions you can see yeah. Yes. Uh, tell me, how do you think your work will be? Is what are the applications potentials of your work? Yeah. Okay, sir. Uh, sorry, sir. I I just. What are the application potentials of your work? Yeah. Yeah, sir. Uh, actually, uh, this uh, I I want to uh, study the um, uh, their adverse uh, effect on uh, antibiotic. Actually, I want to study the antibiotic susceptibility uh, or not actually this biomedics work will lead me, uh, predict that uh, which bacterium will uh, show most resistant towards the antibiotic exposure okay thanks a lot yeah. right thank you thank please you then you can yeah. Yeah, stop, sharing, please, yeah. Yeah, stop sharing and then uh, we'll sir it, i'll be one co comment from the all the participants be very precise and we have to complete within two minutes uh, maybe two slides is more more than sufficient okay just learn and to put one point also what you learn out of this participation of this two week program that should be also part of this presentation specific okay. hypothesis should be clear very specific what question you are asking okay oh, so maybe two slides more no more than two slides please who is the next one thank you question? anshu anshu go on yeah please please anshu to start i'm not able to uh, share my screen because the button is okay fine just a minute. are you able to see it Yes, we can able to uh, yes. please please go ahead. Anshu. Good evening, everybody. Um, let me start by saying that I'm a bioinformatics virgin and this is the first plunge that I'm taking. So please apologize, uh, forgive me for all the mistakes. This study um, deals with the phylogenetic analysis and the genotype distribution of uh, hepatitis B virus isolates from a tertiary care hospital in India. Um, so what did we do? Hepatitis B infection is a serious public health issue and people can have infections which can be active, inactive, subclinical and can go on to something uh, very chronic which can lead to hepatic, hepatocellular cancer. Now hepatitis B viruses have a large number of genotypes which range from A to H and recently uh, type, uh, genotypes I and J have also been discovered. These genotypes have a distinct geographical distribution 
Um, so the aim of the study was to characterize the distribution of hepatitis B genotypes from a tertiary care hospital in Northern India and to carry out a phylogenetic analysis. So what did we do? Uh, we obtained uh, sequences from nine patients who were positive for hepatitis B uh, from the blood samples. The faster files of the hepatitis B sequences were obtained from NCBI gene bank. And to this, uh, 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 to this collection of nine sequences, we added uh, a known prototype sequence of a whole genome and nine different genotypes from GenBank as a reference to compare them. We then used Genome Detective's hepatitis B virus phylogenetic typing tool. Um, following this, uh, what we did was um, we used the, uh, we did genome alignment using the MAFT server where we downloaded the class three and the faster format. Um, we use IQ tree uh, web server to construct a phylogenetic tree using the maximum likelihood and best and find best model. Um, we downloaded the ALN and the tree file, and then we visualized um, the tree using the ITOL server. So a total of 19 sequences with uh, 3,432 nucleotide sites were submitted. Of these, 71 were conserved sites. Uh, of the nine isolated isolates that we analyzed, a genotype could be assigned only to three sequences, and two of them were D, uh, which is a known genotype in northern India, and only one was for A uh, genotypes. So, so the tool could not assign genotypes to the other um, uh, sequences. Uh, these are all the um, um, scores and the weights of the, uh, the statistical parameters that we received. And this is the phylogenetic tree with the nodes, uh, which was drawn uh, by the I ITOL uh, server. And this is the other circular path of that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, we can have a short question. Yeah, you, you can ask, sir. Yeah. So that, that uh, very interesting uh, observation. So uh, do you want to ask any question from the uh, maybe mentors? Because I don't have any question. There is very well designed. Thank you very much. You, you got a lot of uh, tools and techniques and you used it. Very yeah, well, Anshu. Yeah. I, if, I just yeah. have one uh, point, uh, Anshu. I mean, when you describe these genotypes, uh, could, you, uh, could you, you know, uh, describe them, you know, uh, phylogenetically precisely, you know, uh, from the whatever you know samples that you have obtained. Um, not all of them. Actually, they were short sequences, so I couldn't go to the uh, subgenotypes and all that. Uh, I I was wondering if there is another tool to do this. I could not find it online, uh, for especially for hepatitis B. Right, right. You know, that's that's awesome. And I mean, since you know, you're taking, you know, from a genotype to phenotype perspective, you could also, you know, come the other way around. You just start with phenotype and see, you know, if any of these desirable, you know, genotypes, you know, for whatever, you know, uh, HCC types or uh, genotypes, you know, that you would have uh, seen, you know, could be, you know, uh, you know, could be seen, you know, could be, seen. there are some tools actually, you know, which, which probably I'll type in the, actually, thank you so much. Anshu. Yeah. Thank, thank, you. You. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. And we can go for the next one, Anshu. Thank you very much. Now, is the next Lipsia, Pia Lipsia Pia Lipsa Pia Darshini gone. Yes, sir. Yeah, please, please share your slides and be precise, complete within two minutes. Can I start now, sir? Yes, please. Yes, please go on. Uh, uh, okay, okay, thank you, sir. Good evening, everyone, respected board members and all the participants. Today, I'll be presenting about the to topic, docking study for SARS-CoV-2 protein using autodoctyl and prediction of active site residues. So... Uh, sorry, sir. Uh, 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 like, uh, as all of you know about the COVID-19 SARS-CoV-2 disease and all, I'll not talk much about that. I'll directly go to my work, whatever we have done. We have just taken one protein, which is uh, like involved in the SARS-CoV-2, that is 3CL Pro. And from uh, this protein, we have just taken C 6LU7 as a protein target. And uh, uh, from the uh, PDB data bank, then we have just from the popchem we have taken the two drugs named uh, acetyl digitoxin and favipiravir, uh, which are uh, antiviral drugs uh, and uh, effective against uh, different uh, different diseases. And uh, the tools we have used are uh, Autodoc 1.5.6 and Discovery Studio Visualizer. So this this is the workflow. Uh, uh, 
uh, in this, so we have taken two drugs from PropChem and one SARS-CoV-2 target, that is 6 uh, LU7, and we have done this virtual screening and docking scoring <laughs> by generating <laughs> a QT file for both. And <laughs> we have so hello, 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 just a lot of background is coming. Please, I make sure that you use, uh, mute yourself during a lot of background. Please, you continue, please. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. So uh, for this uh, complex, particular complex, uh, 6 uh, LU7 and acetyl, acetyl digitoxin, we got this uh, DZRT uh, docking score uh, having nine confirmations with the docking binding affinity. And for this uh, complex 6 LU7 plus Habipiravir, we got this, uh, this uh, type of binding affinity with nine confirmations. So further, uh, like uh, we, we visualize like interaction uh, residues we visualize through uh, discovery studio like uh, which uh, which through which we can see like what are the binding site residues that are present um, in the protein and uh, in which side of the protein uh, particularly the drug is going and bind so these are the uh, these are the residues that uh, uh, are particularly binding with that particular protein, like namely here we can see there are so many interaction, binder walls interaction, conventional hydrogen bonding also are there present, alkyl, pi, pi alkyl, and so on. So for the uh, 6 LU7 plus 5 epiravir complex, we can see the particular uh, like 2D image for different interactions. So um, from this interacting residues, uh, one can uh, like study the affinity of drug against the particular against that particular target. Like here we have taken this three uh, three cell probe SARS-CoV-2 target. So we can like tell that from this uh, among these two drugs, acetyl digitoxin and favipiravir, according to the binding affinity, uh, acetyl digitoxin is more effective than the favipiravir drugs. So uh, the further uh, like further study can be like we can further do molecular dynamic simulation to see the interaction studies and like the trajectory and all drug repurposing also we can do here. Uh, like I have taken two drugs, but in further study, like we can take even thousands of drugs and we can dock, dock them and we can just see the interaction binding affinity. According to the binding affinity, we can take the top hits. Then after we can further proceed for the molecular dynamic simulation to see the interactions and which are the drugs that can be repurposable for the particular protein or even uh, for the particular, uh, like so many proteins, since there are different proteins that are involved in SARS-CoV-2, we can also try it uh, with so many targets of the particular SARS-CoV-2 protein. Thank you so much. Very, very, very interesting one. So it is uh, this now. It is open for for one only one question. If it's somebody, will I will ask one question. Is there any one question can be asked from the audience? So otherwise, I will ask uh, one thing. Uh, do you know how many papers are published uh, uh, during this COVID time? Uh, Just sir. I need to know. Uh, how many only specific to COVID, COVID and drug repurposing? You got an idea? Uh, yes, sir. Actually, we have already downloaded and uh, currently our lab also we are working on this COVID-19. No, but uh, but uh, please, listen, yes, listen sir. to me. I'm just asking, can you have an idea how uh, many papers, just actually, in number? Uh, numbers, sir, I cannot tell because there are so yeah, many huge yes, amount yes, of papers. Yeah, no, the reason for asking that we have yes, huge sir. number of uh, literature yes, data. Sir. Yeah. And especially to drug repurposing, we have 1,32,000 papers, especially mm -hmm. for COVID, 1,32,000. And mm -hmm. out of that, uh, maybe 50 or 60% of papers are dr for drug repurposing. Yes, it will be uh, somebody can extract this data itself. It's a very gold mining data. Yes, sir. Because Actually, most of the, yeah, 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 please. Through text mining, also we can like extract yes, 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 drugs yes. that has been already used for yes, the particular yes, protein. Yes, yes. We can extract that drugs from text mining also using. So we will, we will we will talk on this thing. You just please yes. contact me after that, and then we will discuss. Uh, sure. Thank you very much, and then uh, congratulations for your this presentation, and then we go go for the next one. Thank you, thank you, sir. Anubhav Laha, please go on with your talk next. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, Anubhav. 
and uh, my presentation is visible. Yes, and Bob. Yes, 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 oh. yes. Okay. Uh, a very good uh, morning, good afternoon, and good evening, as applicable to my uh, respected uh, resource persons and fellow participants who are present here. My name is Anubhav Laha, and today I will be presenting my project work on the role of clinopoietic acid A in prevention of myocardial injury. It has been uh, found out that the heart attack or the myocardial infarction results in the death of nearly 17 million people every year. And in the mouse model, it has been found out that after ischemia, there, uh, uh, there happens the caspase 3 induced apoptosis, which results in myocardial injury. Even in the case of septic shock, the apoptosis of myocardial cell can result uh, via the caspase 3 induced pathway. In order to search for an alternative uh, natural compound drug, which have a uh, little bit less amount of uh, side effect, I have looked into clinopodic acid, which can be found uh, in the hub. Uh, clinopodium vulgari and has been reported to possess antioxidant property. Uh, also, the uh, water extract of that clinopodium vulgari has been safely administered uh, uh, orally in uh, rats and it has been found to possess some sort of anti-cancer and the antibacterial activity. However, the pathway haven't been analyzed as of now. And so my objective of my study is uh, to study the role of uh, the uh, clinopodic acid A in uh, prevention of the myocardial injury by blocking the caspase uh, 3 uh, induced apoptotic pathway. I have uh, downloaded the uh, protein structure of the Homo sapiens caspase 3 and clinopodic acid A from RS, RCSB PDB and PAPCAM respectively. And uh, I have studied the caspase uh, 3 interactive uh, pathway in uh, by downloading from the uh, string and then visualizing it in a cytoscape. Then I have performed uh, um, the docking uh, between these two compounds using the autodoc portman 2, where I have found out that uh, it presents a, a dock pose having a uh, negative uh, free bind. Uh, a free uh, binding energy of minus 5.32 kilocalorie per mole with an inhibition constant of 125.9 micromole at uh, 298.15 uh, Kelvin. And uh, this uh, stability can be due to the fact that there are hydrogen bonds, amide pi stack bonds, and pi alkyl bonds being observed in between uh, the interaction of uh, clinopodic acid A and caspase 3. Thus, it can be concluded that uh, this clinopodic acid A can be used as a potential therapeutic agent in a um, uh, as a cardioprotective agent uh, in case of the myocardial injury, and uh, it uh, will be helpful uh, to inhibit uh, the uh, caspase 3 in induced uh, apoptotic pathway. But however, in uh, future, the stability of that complex and also the active uh, binding site must be analyzed, and also the carcinogenicity and the mutagenicity profile of clinopotic acids uh, acid A must be analyzed before it is used as a uh, uh, safe administration in human cardioprotective trial. These are the references, and I would like to acknowledge uh, these members here, along with my PhD supervisor. Thank you. So very interesting work. Uh, and I really, really want to congratulate you for that. You are the person who's asking a lot of questions, and, and that reflected in your presentation also. Very, very nice. Thank you very much. And you get maximum benefit out of participation in your workshop and that reflected in your presentation and confidence. Thank you very much. Is there a when we can have one short push, uh, question regarding um, presentation? Can I ask one question? Yeah, please go ahead. Speak your name yeah. and then ask your question. Yeah, sure. Anubhav, this is Anshu this side. Uh, just one small question. You did a Caspase 3 interactive pathway. Yes. So how do you think going downstream, this information will help you uh, design better inhibitors for uh, your caspase 3 molecule? Uh, because uh, I was just uh, looking into the caspase 3 uh, in, uh, interactive pathway. So if I block that uh, caspase 3, then uh, uh, the uh, downstream proteins to which that caspase 3 is acting, they might get also inhibited. So I have to study it further to see that whether they are also being uh, controlling uh, any other apoptotic pathway or not. Uh, I have uh, just uh, visualized it and nothing uh, more study have been done by me. Oh, great. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you, Asok, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. We can start with the next one. Sharbana, you can go next. Yes, sir. Uh, 
Yes, sir, Bana, we can see your slide. Oh. Hi, uh, hello, good, uh, good afternoon and good morning, whatever, for all the participants and all the persons. Uh, here I'm going to present my work on our special enzymes called DYP, di-type peroxidase enzyme. And uh, this enzyme, actually, I want to say this is a unique enzyme. When it, it is actually a peroxidase type of enzyme, but sometimes in adverse condition, when the organism lives in the adverse condition, like the environment containing dye, mainly the um, uh, uh, reactive dyes, then uh, they that peroxidase enzyme actually act uh, help to degrade that dye, and the dye source actually uh, act as a nutrient source for the organisms. Mainly, uh, we all know that the reactive dye uh, source uh, uh, and, and can be uh, from uh, from anthraconium type of dye, and that is a reactive dye and form a like a peroxidase sub substrate. That's why this enzyme is able to degrade that dye. I have uh, found that this. The DYP type peroxidase actually isolated from lots of organisms like the different type of fungus and bacteria. Amongst these, one bacteria is there that's called thermobiophila. This is a thermophilic organism and mostly grows in more than 45 degrees centigrade. And we all know that for enzyme, uh, for industrial purpose, we all require the thermophilic enzyme. That's why I choose this uh, organism and this enzyme. And this organism actually, thermobiophila fucosa is a lot studied by uh, before and what whatever but other organism named Dhanubaikita cellular silitica is not till now uh, studied uh, so much that's why i have tried to find the phylogenetic relationship maximum likelihood tree that though you can see that these two organisms though are the same organism but showing the distance relationship with the different two nodes where in this case we are uh, we can see that this uh, bacteria thermobiophila fucosa it's showing distance relationship with only fungus we can clearly say that because they are from different domain but these things clearly surprise me that's why i choose this bacteria now comes to the uh, enzyme i have uh, isolated one enzyme from pdbid and by choosing the parameters and there i have uh, done the physical chemical characterization where i can uh, tell that the enzymes i mean the uh, the, the dyp type peroxidase from this organism is containing 395 amino acid with a theoretical pH which is very acidic 4.88 actually this enzyme normally get activated in this kind of ph now uh, that the, this is the instability index and this is the hydrophobicity index and gravity value this all tells that the back that the these proteins are really stable in nature and the 3d id score and the, all these things they are all tell that the cumin jet score also and the edat quality factor the 98 percent uh, amino acid pass through this uh, uh, qualification but uh, though this enzyme is not uh, really weight lab tested till now now we can get the structural uh, uh, structural uh, things that the, this enzyme actually contain more number of amino acid and mainly this uh, amino acid uh, contain alanine, asparagine, and leucine. And you all know that alanine is a hydrophobic uh, in uh, amino acid along with leucine, and both these amino acids contain a huge uh, huge take participate uh, take part in alpha helix formation. That's why we can see that in secondary structure number of alpha helix is more, and we all know the number of alpha helix more means the enzyme is thermally stable. Well, this, is, uh, this enzyme is also structurally, uh, according to 3D profile quality index, this enzyme is also structurally stable. Now we can see that this uh, enzyme also had a good quality in the Ramachandran plot. And uh, this have nearly 579 uh, number of hydrogen bonds. It's more number of hydrogen bonds make the structure uh, stable. And that's why we are we, can, we are checking this uh, kind of things for uh, saying that the structure is fine or not. Now comes to Solbridge for the structural uh, uh, structural confirmation. Solbridge is very, uh, very important thing. And here you can see asparagine and arginine thing. Uh, Solbridge is num number is the highest. It's, it's 49 out of uh, nearly 60 uh, solid bridge, I have, uh, I can tell you. And this is because both are anionic and uh, cationic interactions. Now comes to the functional thing. And um, the, in, case, in case of functional things, we can say that uh, this enzyme is totally cytosolic. No transplantant helix is present. Next, in the local quality model estimation by the Q-means code, we can say that this model is uh, this model chosen by me for GS1 PDBID is really is very good because you can see that the red star is the enzyme. 
our query enzyme, which is within uh, the Z score bar. And that's it, that our, uh, our enzyme, query enzyme is really good in structure. And now comes to functional interaction. This is the 3D structure of the protein. And this is the string analysis I have done. And I check that what kind of pathways or what kind of other um, proteins that is interacting with this DYP type of enzymes. And I found that they are really showing that the uh, interaction with peroxidase or catalyst types of enzymes. That means this enzyme is really showing degradation in a peroxidase kind of pathway. Now come to the interaction actually. Uh, this is a structure of uh, reactive blue 19, which is a uh, reactive. Please line complete fast because it's already uh, more than uh, three minutes, three and a half minutes. Yeah, please. Yeah. I'm sorry. Come to the conclusions. Uh, yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, and by uh, you can conclude that the, the structure and the function all are very uh, structurally stable and functionally also stable. So in future, uh, we can uh, draw a, we can draw a weight lab experiment based on this in silico experiment that where we will study DYP because uh, from bacteria so it's not from other than because we all know that bacteria for downstream uh, process, process is really easy. That's how we can use this bacteria in industrial purpose to degrade the dye because we all know that's water is polluted in by the industries. Thank you, sir. No, I think it is open for question if somebody asks a short question. Yeah, wonderful, Shrabana. So where do you see this workshop, you know, uh, as a part of your, uh, you know, this particular project? How, how good was it uh, helpful for you? So the workshop is really very good and I am a botany student and this very scratch thing. So I have learned it and tried to incorporate the things I have learned in from the workshop, like the bacterial informatics tools, like the phylogenetic tree tools, uh, then the cytoscape thing I tried, but I failed. And then the string analysis I have done, and then I have tried to do docking. Wonderful, then, wonderful, yeah. Wonderful. Thank you, Shrabana. Yeah. So next place. Yeah. yeah. Yes, sir. Please go on. You can do present. You present. Esther, oh, you lowered your hand. Is you still there? Okay, fine. Oh, yeah, you can, do. I am here. You can see sorry. your. No problem. No problem. You can see your presentation. Okay. Um, good evening, everyone. I'm Esther, and my colleagues, Shimasha and Diniti, uh, uh, will be presenting you on the investigation of the interaction of epigallocatechin uh, gallate with alpha cyanuclein in Parkinson's disease. So, um, the background of this research is that alpha cyanuclein is a protein encoded by uh, SNCA gene, right? So the aggregation of the misfolded alpha cyanuclein in neurons is uh, the hallmark for Parkinson's disease. And it has been hypothesized that the propagation of the aggregates begins in the gut and enters the brain via the vagus nerve. And thereby the possible trigger that induces a mutation of SNCA gene is assumed by a pathogen. This is in line with the finding that Parkinson's disease is characterized by gut microbial interactions and flavonoids as we know it have neuroprotective actions within the brain uh, and so with molecular docking mm -hmm. analysis we uh, uh, saw that EGCG which is a compound in green tea uh, is able to interact with alpha sign um, and so for this we con conducted the molecular docking process using the auto docking 4.26 of the. We prepared the protein and the ligand for docking and then set the crate box. And uh, we performed the docking uh, using the Lamarckian genetic algorithm. And finally, we visualized using the uh, using Pymol. And this was the result that we got. We saw two interactions, one at the loop and one at the ad adjacent alpha helix. So um, this potentially uh, ha this has the potential that uh, uh, that uh, e e EGCG is able to drive the protein into degradation after immobilization instead of uh, it being aggregated 
and uh, therefore uh, this leads us to a future aspiration of developing a drug strategy with the concept of treating misfolded alpha cyanucleine not just in the brain but also in the gut given the fact that these misfolded proteins in the gut is a characterization of early onset parkinson's disease thank you Thank you, thank you very much. And, and then you can ask a few questions. Uh, hi, uh, Anshu this side. Just one uh, question, Esther, very well done. So uh, what is the mechanism for Parkinson? Like alpha uniclein uh, actually that it leads to aggregation, right? So how do you think that the molecule that you tested can stop aggregation? Hello, um, Mass. Um, hello. Yes, yes, I can hear you. Uh, Ma'am, I, I was also part of that uh, project, uh, that uh, analysis. So can I also try to answer? Yes, yes, please. Uh, okay, so ma'am, you are asking is how this, uh, so basically uh, in Parkinson's disease, the uh, hallmark is characterized as alpha synuclepathy in dopaminogenic neuron system in CNS, right? But uh, there's a famous uh, hypothesis where this uh, alpha synuclepathy start from the gut and it uh, it uh, spread to the CNS via uh, like start from the uh, enteric nervous system and spread to the CNS via enteric nervous system. And, uh, sorry, uh, vagal nerve. So this uh, so there are like mountain evidence that suggest uh, alpha uh, like uh, way before the. Uh, motor symptom like onset of the Parkinson's disease, uh, we can see those uh, alpha synuclein expression in the gut. So in this study, like we uh, we we uh, we just try to uh, um, find a like potential uh, uh, drug potential uh, compound that can inhibit the aggregation of alpha synuclein not just in the brain, but also in the gut. In this case, we can do this because of uh, it, it, like the alpha synuclein expression uh, is also present in the gut. So this, uh, we have found that uh, the interaction uh, between that uh, uh, major binding site where alpha, uh, adjacent alpha helix loop and uh, with the, with EGC and I mean, adjacent uh, loop and the adjacent uh, alpha helix of alpha synuclein with EGC. So whenever that uh, interaction, uh, like they bind, that bind inside comprising the loop. So it is crucial for any protein to exhibit its dynamic nature so that, uh, and it will in turn cause the immobilization, which drive, which gives signals to a uh, ubiquitin like ligase pathways and uh, uh, finally, to degrade instead of being aggregated. So this way. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. All so right. This, yeah. Okay. Thanks, Esther. So we are trying to uh, compare, like, in the next steps, we are trying to compare the uh, binding, uh, like, inhibition, uh, uh, potent, like, this inhibitant uh, capability of the EGCG with compared to other flavonoids as well and uh, select a one. Select the best one. Oh, very good. Very good Thank answer. You. Ashok, are you there? Hello, Ashok, are you there? So okay. I'm there. I'm just, uh, you, you can start with the next presentation. Thank you very much. Uh, okay, Ignacia, you can go next. Ignacio, Hello? we can see your presentation. Yeah, we can see. You can make it the full, full, full view. Okay, okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, good morning. I, I hope you are do heal. Uh, I am Ignacio Sanchez, a final year student of engineer uh, and biotechnology from University Católica del Maule, Chile. Uh, sorry for my English. If any is, if any 
of you will have difficulty to understand how it. Uh, I will try my best. I'm also new going to upload video. I three if any problem I face in future. I write to you. Uh, my last summer of thesis, a few hard works on in silico structure function relationship of bacterial glycosyl transferase enzyme. A uh, great uh, doctor, doctor Abana Birnach, uh, which you can see here uh, in this project. I try to do some extension of the same work. Phylogenic free of oxobolexaracai uh, producing glycosides transferase has been prepared using mega X through maximum like hood method on GDG matrix model based approach, as can be seen here. Uh, Phylogenic uh, tree has been as prepared for each uh, of the mesophilic lactobacillus plantarum um thermophilic rhodothermus marinus and hyperthermophilic thermus thermophilus uh, through NCBI protein blast. It's really, uh, interesting in uh, all three of the commonly uh, shown ancestric white same family hiding of diverse tensimi is synthesizing different types of exopolysaccharides. For, addition, for additional function determination, uh, expensive uh, sulfinature tool is used uh, to detect tyrosine sulfination, the most structural plastic on functional activity thermophilic rhododermus uh, orange enzyme is shown here uh, to have two tyrosine sulfination insidious cooperate to the other two clays. Tyrosine sulfination uh, is ready here reported to indice cells to cells communication in bacteria. Thus, rhodermus probability undergoes EPAs uh, mediated cellular communication uh, under the roof of the film, biofilm. Uh, one particular motive and two dominates repeat why two different scores are also observed in the glass thermophilic rhodermus origin enzyme. Thank you all so much for patience here. Thank Thanks a lot. Yeah, we'll please, go with the yeah. next. Uh, we'll go to yes, the next yeah. participant. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next, it is Ranjan or Rajan. Yeah. So, yeah, if I can just take uh, 20 minutes. seconds, please. Uh, Kiran, I'm sorry. Sure. I think you know, we, should, uh, we should give a big round of applause to Ignacio. Uh, you know, he was uh, attending the classes even, even though he was operated, even though he was operated on that day uh, with a new surgery, he was attending the classes you know, through his mobile. I think you know, we should give uh, you know, a something out of applause you know, to Aparna student Ignacio. Please. Thank you. Good, good, good. Sure, of course. Um, yeah, then we can go with the uh, Ranjan or Rajan, and I'll be presenting for him. Uh, just so go on. Okay, just you let me know whenever you want me to change the slide. Yeah, but I can't see. Just when I see, I can start. Okay. I cannot see the slide. Okay. It means, yeah. Okay, just a moment. Uh, no, sir, this is not. This is not. This is Rajendra. Okay, Rajan. Yeah, but you, you said this one, Rajan, in the chat. Okay, fine. I'll go for the next person. If somebody is there, we will figure out what is your presentation then. Just a moment.
Is there anybody else who wants to present? Okay, seems to be that you're the last person, then we have to figure it out your presentation. Is it bioclus rajan.pptx? Is that one? Is that yours? No, 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 no. It is about the glucosin only. But then you said uh, that is a sit. Yeah, bioclus rajan, when I said yes, you said that is yours. Okay. So what is the name of your presentation? Is it ranjan pre yes. underscore presentation dot PDF? Yes, yes. Okay. Just a minute. In the meantime, when you are searching this presentation, uh, uh, Dave, you want to say something? Unmute yourself and let me know. You raise your hand. Uh, no, sir. I would like to uh, present. Uh... Yeah, yeah. We'll wait for that. Uh, yeah, wait for John. Yes, please. Are you ready with your presentation? So. Yes. Now, I think Rajan, you, can... you can present. Okay, Ranjan, go ahead, Ranjan. Is, is that yours? Just a moment. Yeah, but I, I can't see because due to internet problem here, just a just moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah yes, in the meantime, yes, you know, while he loads, uh, dear participants, you know, we received only eight, uh, you know, uh, post evaluation uh, answers, responses. The others have not at all done. So please, you know, I really appreciate, you know, please do it. We really, you know, request you to, you know, uh, do the post evaluation, which is absolutely, you know, very, very much place. Thank you so much. Can we start? Uh, yes, Rajan. Um, I can only say if you can't see, then I can only say on on your slide what is there on the title. That I can say, but I, is that okay yeah, for yeah. you? Yeah, yeah. Identification of putative glucosinolate related yes. genes. Yeah. Okay. I just switch to the first slide where you have all the pictures go on yes yes uh, but it is not the full scale it is, uh, yeah 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 right now evening, you can see full screen yeah I, I can see now yeah go on. yeah okay so sorry for bothering you a lot i i, I apologize for this and okay myself ranjan kumar sir and good good up, good evening and good morning to all of you in which time zone you are so my work is regarding the identification of putative glucosinolate related genes in brassica ulerasia associated with just tops yeah you're still talking about the title go on yeah yeah so, okay associated with biotic stress tolerance okay my slide will not be that much attractive like others because I have just planned this work few days in this course of workshop. So the glucosinolates are the, one of the most important nutraceuticals present in brassicaceous vegetables. And these are best known for their antioxidative and anti-carcinogenic properties in humans. And for me, the interesting part is that they are, play, they, they are playing an important role in the, uh, in the defense mechanism against a range of plant pathogens such as fungi, fungi, bacteria, and insects. So, so during the workshop, it came to my, my mind. Why not, why not just characterize these glucosinolate related genes associated, associated with major fungal and bacterial diseases in Brassica ulerasia? Because this information is very, very limited in Brassica ulerasia. So keeping this in my mind. So I started to scanning or I collect, and before there was a work in my group, where they have identified putative glucosinolate related genes through association analysis. So I took those genes and scanned against the Arabidopsis glucosinolate related genes in Brassica ulerasia in the Gramini and blasted it and tried to know their chromosomal location, gene structure, conserved domain, etc. So the, the, I took total six putative glucosinolate related genes and during this work, I just found, found that all, all the genes are interestingly related to some fungi or bacterial resistant genes. So this is how I did my work. This has shown already in our workshop. There is nothing great. Just, just you can go to the next slide.
Yes, it is Hello, next sir? slide. Yeah. yeah, it is next slide now. Yeah, yeah. So where so, my so, gone? Okay. So, um, so uh, what we'll do, uh, just try to conclude. Uh, there's no need for slides. Uh, we will share and then you can share on the WhatsApp. Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah I cannot please. see my slide now. It's okay. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. It's okay. You can share the slides on a WhatsApp. Just conclude yourself what exactly you design. Just conclude. 30 seconds. Okay. Yeah, please. Yeah. Uh, are you listening to me? Yes, yes, Hello. yes, yes. Yeah, yes, please, please. Yes, sir, yes, sir. yes, please. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and yeah, the, the, the thing is that what I found, these most of the genes that relate the MOIB 20, MO, <laughs> MOIB 28, MOIB 29, and, and MOIB 51 domains, they are related with the major defense against the pseudomonas fluorescence, against the sclerotinia, sclerotium, and also some black rot. And also they are involved in the in, in, innate, innate immunity response in Arabidopsis thaliana. So this could be a very good starting point to do the functional analysis in Brassica ulerasia. So that so that is my finding. And I am I am I have already proposed this work in my group. So we'll be carry forward with this work. And sir, in the last slide, in the last slide, just I will take 10 minutes. So I we we have a group collection of broccoli genotypes which represent the total diversity of broccoli in China. So what I did, I did the, with the mega software because I had these several sequences from the, all, all the 372 genotypes. And interestingly, I found that the, those are the, the, the very weak grouping exists here with very low bootstrap value. So it gives me an indication this could be a very good candidate population for association analysis for any of the trade. And this population I am going to, our group is going to use for to do, do the, to, uh, to find the associated loci for several biotic stresses. And we'll see how these biotic stresses genes are related to glucosinolate related genes. And also we'll do the expression analysis to see the up-regulation and down-regulation down regulation of the genes which are linked to this glucosinolate-related genes or not. So that's all I want to tell. Very, very, very congratulations. Thank you very much. And I can see the effort you have made. And it's okay, whatever the way you are, it worked for me. And I'm really happy that you worked on, you created hypothesis, you worked on some of the tools and get this beautiful work done. Thank you very much. If you have a question, uh, we can ask a short question maybe. Otherwise, we'll be ready to go for the next one. Any question? Sir, Jairam, sir, aap, uh, isme, if you want to have comment or... Dr. Uh, Sundar, I uh, just want to know what will be the number of genes in different genomes of this uh, glu glucosinolate related genes, yeah? Uh, sir, in Arabidopsis, there are more than 130 to 150 genes are already reported with functional... It is characterized functionally also. So, uh, we hope that we will find also, if not less than 20 glucosinolate-related genes in Brassica ulerasia, because in its related species like Brassica rapa, it is well characterized. And, and interestingly, the broccoli, because Brassica ulerasia, this broccoli, cauliflower, and kholrobi, they look same, but they belong to the, they look different, sorry, they look different, but they belong to the same species. And interestingly, my crop in broccoli, they will have very, very high content of Glucosinolates is there. So, so we are hopeful that we will get a good number of genes. But surprisingly, not much work has been done in this aspect till now. It has been done the, like its hydrolysis product and other work. But how it is related to biotic stress, it is not characterized. But as coming to your question, yes, there are more than 130 or 150 genes has been characterized in Arabidopsis. Thanks a lot. I would like to keep in touch with you on this. I have some interesting uh, work uh, to suggest. Okay, sure, uh, sir. Sure. Uh, uh, collaborative work. Thanks a lot. Let us go to the next person. Yeah. Good, Ranjan. You made it really well, wonderful in this difficult circumstances. Fine. Sorry, sorry. Okay. I, I, because person? my internet is very, very unstable. Sorry for bothering you all. No, 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 much no, time no not, a, not at all bothering. Very proud of you. No. Thank you. Okay, next, yeah. please. Dave, next you can go. Thanks. 
Uh, good, good evening, everyone. So today I would like to focus on bioinformatic approach in identification of a possible biomarker in signaling pathways on new uh, tumorogenesis of cancer initiating cells of in -cell ductal carcinoma and invasive ductal carcinoma. So uh, move, um, moving on, cancer is a disease caused by a disordered cell group due to genetic mutation. So small uh, cancer stem cells have the same genetic dri driving mutations as most cancer, uh, cancer cells. But stem cells have development characteristics that differ from the non uh, stem cells. So the signaling pathways in non small uh, in cancer stem cells provide a preliminary basis of developing the compounds uh, targeting in uh, cancer stem cells. Signaling pathways that regulate the self renewal and differentiation of uh, stem cells include WNT, Hedgehog, and Notch is considered in this uh, uh, in this study. So in the methodology, first uh, I selected seven uh, patient samples and seven controls, all were transcriptomics and uh, and uh, in uh, ductal uh, ductal uh, in situ carcinoma and uh, five patients and five controls in invasive ductal carcinoma and all are Illumina data, high seek. Then after that, I uh, subjected it to uh, pre-processing uh, from uh, PCR cleaning and uh, trimomatic, then uh, the all the data were norm, uh, uh, subject to normalization, quantum normalization. Then I conduct PCA analysis to check whether uh, it is uh, uh, can, it is mainly divided into two groups. Then uh, I annotated the genes. Uh, then I subjected to filter the biomarkers, which is more significantly expressed by a differential ex uh, gene expression. So for that, I ran a uh, DSIC five time. Uh, so uh, these are the results that I uh, came across. Uh, as you can, uh, sorry. So as you can see, all uh, in notch and w, uh, WNT pathways, uh, compared to the control samples, all the patient samples shown an upregulation of WNT signaling biomarkers, as well as uh, not signaling biomarkers. Uh, so uh, these are the conclusions of my research. So the uh, I found uh, seven uh, biomarkers each for notch and WNT, which are upregulating. So the main uh, due to disease notch and WNT signaling pathways is mostly cause for cell proliferation, and uh, due to that, when there is an upregulation, it uh, causes cancer. Uh, it uh, retains the cancer uh, cells as well as the renewability increases. Uh, so by targeting these biomarkers, it, one day it will be an opportunity to uh, address by drugs in order to control these uh, cancer. So for the future studies, I recommend to optimize the pipeline protocols and methodology as well as to move on most uh, statistical analysis and by using deep neural network analysis and docking, I would like to uh, more focus on the biomarkers, which is more specific uh, specificity considering the variance of the individual samples. Uh, and uh, thank you. Now we open for any question, any comment. I think Sugu, you can comment and then you will appreciate the presenter also. If you can comment something. On this is specifically the gene deficient gene expression and is identifying the novel marker. If you can point out something, or no, no, no yeah. that's that's really good piece to uh, see the presentation. Yeah, I have no questions, but I'm just trying to. Yeah, uh, yeah thank thank you. Always, always encouraging to the presenter, especially the young one. Yeah, yeah. Thank, thank you, you, thank you. It was very good. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Uh, 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 Jairavan sir or Sundar sir, if you can comment, because really I want uh, some of the collaborators should engage with this presentation is a good potential. I am open to that. Please contact me anytime. Thanks. Thank, Thank you. you. So if you yeah, do... I think uh, Ashok, if I can just comment, you know, they have used wonderfully, you know, Tober platform, all the four, uh, five Sri Lankan part participants. Uh, Tober is, you know, this PineBios uh, platform, actually. So I think I, I can see that these results were extrapolated. But uh, anyways, apart from that, any any open source tools uh, uh, that you learned from the workshop, was it useful? 
like you know shabana said that you know uh, cytoscape was useful you know from my yeah, books were yeah uh, cytoscape was uh, even i even uh, i have an idea to uh, use a cytoscape uh, in this research so was, as well uh, yeah uh, one thing yeah 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 just i i got it your point sir so if you have any comment on this uh, uh, exactly how these things will be work out i really see lot of missing that the view people are presenting a lot of very beautiful work but uh, it should be also in a way you should ask for collaboration at the end of this presentation you can ask there are you cannot learn each and every skill because there is a lot of skill you can input in your uh, presentation so that improve the enhance the quality of this project uh, you can go at please what are you are saying complete your dev yes say so, see as yes, i would like to uh... uh go with collaborations because i have so many ideas uh, but with the limit of uh, the knowledge uh if someone if uh, any if i am open to any uh, suggestions and all that to optimize this uh, research and move on for the next step of this uh, research really thank you thank you very much and then uh, if we, there is no question we can go for and congratulate dev and we will go for the next presentation kiran um that was the last right now nobody the last. has next okay. hand so i right, please, i, I so i will uh, just uh, just a minute maybe yeah. we'll ask one more time if uh, okay. are there any presenters we will wait for 30 seconds in the meantime i want to uh, submission one of the request yes, there is one presenter okay with well, this one presentation parminder go on Can you hear Parminda? Yeah. Okay. Parminda, sure. Yes, Parminda, we can see. Uh, you have to unmute yourself. Yeah. Go on. Good afternoon, everyone. Present here. Uh, myself, Parminda Singh. I'm Uni Research Fellow in Center for System Biology and Bioinformatics, Punjab University, Chandigarh. So I present on a uh, identification of ubiquitin uh, conjugatic enzyme inhibitors as a potential anti-cancer agent using computer aided drug development. So um, ubiquitin plays role in a cell cycle progression by causing the destruction of mitotic cyclins. it overstates in various type of cancer so it is a biomarker and candidate gene for developing therapeutics option so there is a structure of jubit jubit uh, to ap c2 complex so uh, it is downward from pdb and uh, here is a methodology of uh, my study uh, first is a target identification so we have a jubit to see as a target for our study uh, to attach a molecule or on a ubiquitin so to inhibit it so we remove a apc to uh, nf is promoting complex subjectivity from this structure and uh, predict the binding site of this and uh, use this site for the uh, <coughs> ligand binding so we download a, a library uh, and from national cancer institute it is a Two uh, lakh and fifty two thousand compounds in a library. Then we uh, it's screen in a virtual screening by Pyrex software, and uh, we take a top uh, compounds with a binding energy of with binding energy, and we then we go for a mole, molecular docking with the, these compound, and we have a result for molecular result of molecular docking here. There is a top compound, and this is a ligand ID. So there is a binding energy of minus seven point five two. So the less the binding energy, it is a more efficient to bind uh, to the target ligand bind to the target. So and uh, we also see the interaction with which residue is a non-covalent interaction here. Show that uh, uh, using particular site and determine. and uh, my work is in progress so there is some result of uh, autodoc score and the pyrex score 
from my work and uh, it is uh, next to be done at Medford filing and uh, molecular dynamic simulation and then in, in vitro studies of that molecule. So we are, I just finished with that. Thank you. Although uh, this is our ongoing work and I really request all the other participants don't copy it. So I initially got a very interesting work. So sorry for that and uh, and uh, uh, it is open for any any comment, please. We already screened more than 90,000 compounds and we got a very interesting results and we, we are committed to complete this full library screening and then we'll go for pharmacophore modeling and then go for molecular docking dynamics all of the things already planned and then finally go for in vivo validation of the same compound. So, so great work, uh, Ashok and uh, Parminder. Yeah. That's awesome, awesome mentoring, uh, Ashok. I was just wondering, you know, do you have that much computational, uh, you know? Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, okay. yeah. yes, yes, we have, we have, yes, yes. Yeah, wonderful, wonderful. Uh, session is open for question and I will be happy and very happy if you ask some of question from Parminder. Now we am, I am interested to training him for uh, responding uh, very beautifully all the questions. So you, is this open for any question? Question or comment, anything before we conclude? So if there are no questions, I just have one uh, yeah. question to Parminder. Uh, so Parminder, you know, screening so many compounds and at some point of time, you know, you should jot down to, you know, some kind of, you know, uh, common most compounds you know, that could probably uh, be perused you know, for you know ligand uh, uh, you know uh, uh, receptor you know chemistry at some point of time. So would you be able to use this particular data uh, you know at some point of time you know, for future training, machine learning based predictive analytics at some point of time, so that you know you mm -hmm. can reduce your uh, job uh, uh, you know job you know for future uh, such studies, yeah. I think about that, uh, and I have a reserve 70,000 compounds. So I will, will be build a machine learning model for that. Right. And, uh, yeah, wonderful, wonderful. Thank you, thank you, Parminder. Thank you, Ashok. Yeah. So now uh, we can. I think if you can ask, still Kiran, we can ask if somebody is still left or some some hands are raised up, so they can comment. Mm -hmm. it's, yeah, this is open for the uh, last 30 seconds. This session is open now. And we, before we conclude and uh, this part of this seminar or uh, workshop, if somebody can want to yeah, ask any question. Yeah, please. Sugu, no, you want to Sugu Naka, please go on. Yeah, please. Um, yeah, that was a very good presentation, Parminder. And uh, congrats, Ashok. Uh, like you have used a Pyrex, right? A multi ligand approach. Uh, yes. uh, how how far it is like for example you see daughter dog then you, do, you see molly grow then you see gold or you see uh, squad engines or tools and uh, how different like the the, the rmsd values when when you compare pyrex with other tools uh, is, is it the same or is it uh, nearly the same uh, how do you see the results yeah please Uh, Parminder, are you there? Uh, Parminder? Yes. Hello? Yeah, please respond, please. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, this is uh, some different in Autodoc and Pyrex. We only use uh, this software that time. So, there is a uh, uh, like uh, difference of one, like if winding energy in Pyrex is uh, minus eight and something, and Autodoc is minus eight point or na uh, about nine. So there is a small difference in this. Yeah, I think okay, you can, thank you. Uh, yeah. If it's still we are, uh, uh, Dr. Jairaman yeah. sir and uh, Sundada, if we, uh, Aparna and all are open for any comment before the 15 second conclusion, if you can comment on something. Uh, Ashok uh, sir, instead of uh, going for docking of around like 70, 80,000 compounds, okay. uh, what if you do first, first you do uh, admit analysis in order to reduce the compounds? Okay, okay. Okay, okay. we can do that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Admit the filing for pen filter. So uh, what I am interested to do next, uh, there is a technique called PLR partial lead regression modeling.
so i'll be doing this uh, modeling uh, the, uh, and then we'll be taking these uh, uh, as a independent uh, variable all the molecular descriptor values so that is the thing uh, we already planned and uh, i already talked to uh, jayaraman sir also and sundar do i'll be also communicating i'm very very much interested to have the pattern recognition related to their binding affinity and there are uh, seven to eight types of scores we got from the pyrex or molecular docking so i want to see the pattern also i need to see what sort of interactions are favorable in uh, drugs which is categorized under anti cancer if there is signature type of interaction we can get bonding or non bonding interaction uh, that i'm intended to there a lot of okay so, so now we can wind up wind up and uh, we can go to Sir, the next can part. i say something yeah, yeah uh... no, please you can yeah, write please, on please a chat very, very fast please we don't have time please be yeah, very yeah, fast please. yeah please sir no, yes sir uh, it's just uh, seven, uh, that means there is a uh, that uh, i wanted to present something but uh, that i wanted to present the ngs technique that i have done but uh, the fact is uh, i did not expect to uh, it will take so much time and the vcf file is still running it's 9 gb now but it's still running but uh, that i have uh, but uh, i wanted to tell one just uh, a, an idea about the ngs because uh, it was my most favorite uh, area because uh, from this uh, workshop and i learned so many things that uh, and even i uh, tried in that my computer and i installed uh, all the things in my computer i installed all those semtools bemtools and bcftools on my own co computer I, and i installed linux or linux then and just uh, that was my first time but i searched google uh, dot from youtube and then i uh, yeah, i, I, I got I, i got your intention and it's uh, uh, yeah but you it's late yes. that, that did not happen but i want to just uh, one idea so can i tell uh, can i say that no no uh, no please i will not allow you to speak here okay. then you can write it on a chat box and then we can conclude now kiran thank you very much and we can say in conclusion uh, uh, i will i am interest, interested to have that uh, uh, creation of a network uh, based on your skill set and your requirement just say uh, just i will be creating a google form having a four to five columns and i will be creating that research network so that we can club in an organic way what sort of skill other people have and you can contact with the other person i will share that network with the uh, with the group and then uh, please share that uh, fill that google form and then i'll create that uh, research network for this particular uh, workshop participant including mentors also so uh, before we conclude i we, i think we can conclude now sir jaram sir uh, sundar sir yeah yeah sir i think yeah, uh, everybody yeah. made wonderful presentations and yes. they also answered the questions uh, very well and uh, not only the presentation the work they have done also is very amazing and uh, let us hope uh, they get more enthused and then do better and better work yeah thanks yeah well yeah jaram sir you can say something for the encouragement of the student because really your words matter you can say some word hello jaram uh, yeah. sir yeah, yeah this is what uh, i think uh, we have a session to talk right prash yeah okay 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 yeah, yeah I, was, i was just about to say that if i may be allowed to speak yeah can i be yeah. allowed to please, speak please 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 thank you yeah so friends you now let's thank ashok uh, uh, jeraman sir and kiran you know for their wonderful handling this this has been great and great presentations so let's give him a, give them a thumping applause please huh? yeah thank yeah. you so, but i would quickly uh, request aparna to uh, come up with uh, sharing our presentations